So welcome to class, everyone. Um, I'm Melinda Schneider, your instructor. Before class uh, gets started and before every class, make sure that when you logged into the web conference, you click on the purple tab on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, um, click on the gear icon, and then click on set up your camera and microphone. Uh, you'll want to go through the prompts to make sure your microphone and video camera are working. The other areas um, on the screen down on the bottom right hand side are the chat, which is the bubble, and then the one next to that is the attendees panel, which is how you will see who is actually attending the class. I want you to relax, make sure you enjoy class, and make sure you eliminate all distractions, turn off your phone, put your animals away, and we'll get started. Uh, we're going to first do a quality check. Uh, please raise your hand, which is the bottom middle of the page, with the person with their hand up. Um, click on that if you can hear me okay, um, if you can see the red recording light, and if quality check appears at the top of the page. Great, you can put your hands down. Just click on that icon again. Thank you. So this is class two for all of our virtual listeners. It's February 1st, 2019. And again, I'm in your instructor, Melinda Schneider. Uh, our book is Thinking Collaboratively, Learning in a Community of Inquiry by D. Randy Garrison. And today we're gonna to be talking about chapter four, which is titled A New Era. Uh, this chapter covers distance education, campus-based education, and also online learning. The learning objectives for this class are after this web conference, you will be able to name three types of distance education, describe learning communities, explain why distance education and face-to-face -face courses produce the same learning outcomes, and name at least two advantages of learning communities. So we're going to start out with a little icebreaker, and I'm going to have you answer this question. I want you to indicate whether you agree or disagree with the following statement. Um, online courses are as effective as face-to-face -face courses. To do this, you'll click on the your face that's in the bottom middle of the screen, or else um, there's a person icon, and then you can click on agree or disagree. So it looks like everybody agrees that online courses are as effective as face-to-face -face courses. So in the chat box, just real quick, can you give me a reason why you agree or disagree? And to do that, you'll click on the chat, uh, which is the balloon, and type in the Say Something box. So Katie's not sure. She's kind of on the fence. Candace um, agrees if they're done well. Thank you. And Annika uh, has taught online, blended, and face-to-face -face courses, which is what we're talking about in this chapter. And she thinks that no matter the format, it's only as good as instructor. And I think I'd have to agree with you there. Uh, the instructor for me has always made all the difference on whether the class was effective for me or not. So how did distance education begin? Um, that was how everything kind of started. Not everybody was a traditional student. We didn't have a lot of technology. Um, there wasn't the internet and not everybody had computers. So distance education began with just content being mailed to, to students. They would cover the content, take tests and mail it back. But this assumed that everyone was an independent self-directed learner, which not everyone is. So real quick, I'm going to have you on the next slide. Uh, we'll use a shape tool to circle what type of learner you believe yourself to be. Um, to use the shape tool, you'll click in the top left corner, what looks like a square. Um, choose the ellipsis when I click on the, to the next slide, and then uh, choose your preferred learning style or how you, what type of learner you think you are. So 
So two are kinesthetic learners and one prefers reading and writing. So that just kind of goes to show that not everyone learns the same way. So having one type of just mailing information to a student wasn't the best way for students to learn. Uh, so campus education obviously has always been around, but in the last half century it's really grown um, because of the demand for higher education. So in response to that, the size of courses at a lot of colleges um, kept getting bigger and bigger. Um, but this type of teaching and the way students were learning it didn't engage the students because they were just big, massive classes of students. Um, and they found out that this had basically the same success rate as the distance education had when we were just mailing information to students. So on the next slide, I'm going to have you use the pointer to point to the number that represents the largest number of students you've ever had in one of your college courses. So in the upper left corner, you'll click on the little hand um, when we get to the next screen, and then just point to the largest number of students you've ever had in one of your college classes. So it looks like uh, one person's had 50, one person's had 200. And someone's less than 30, which is great. Um, I've never had to be in a really, really large class with, I think the log, the largest I've had was about 50. Um, I, I can't see myself learning very well in a class that has like over 200 students. Um, so with advances in technology, um, they started rethinking education and tried to develop ways we could use technology to help with learning. So that's kind of where online learning came from. Um, in the book, it talks about the three main types of online learning, which are blended, completely online classes, and then MOOC classes, which are massive online open courses. Um, and all of these on some level allow for interaction and chances for students to, coll to collaborate with each other. Uh, a polling question. I'm going to bring up a poll and I want to know how many online courses you've taken while you've been in college. So let me get the poll up here. So you'll choose one for zero, two for one to three, three for four to six, and four if you've had seven or more online classes while you've been in college. So all over the board, so one person's had one to three, one person's had four to six, and one's had seven or more. That's quite a range there. So one uh, thing that the author talks about in our book um, is learning communities. And this is how he suggests uh, the best way to have collaborative and interaction between students. So what are learning communities? Learning communities are groups of people who share an academic interest. Um, they meet to collaborate. They can do that virtually or in person, either way. And this improves student engagement because they're working together and it also encourages collaboration um, and lets them learn from each other also. So our next activity is on the next slide I'm going to have you type your name and what you feel might be one benefit of being part of a learning community. So in the top left corner of the screen, you'll click on the T, you'll type your name when I get to the next slide, and then uh, one benefit of being part of a learning community. And it'll take about a minute or less to do this, please.
those are some great advantages. You get different perspectives um, when you're working from different with different people. Um, a diverse range of people backgrounds, that's, that's a great advantage. And you get to meet new people. That was one thing that, that I came up with too. Um, they're supportive and they're resources for you. Uh, I'm thinking of, you can use them at work too, not just in the educational setting. And one of my favorite things or one advantage I thought was it does allow you to meet new people. And you already have one thing in common because you're learning or you're meeting because of a subject or a class or something that you need to work on at work. So in summary today, we've talked about how teaching and learning have changed in the past. Uh, it started out with mailing educational content and now it's developed into fully online education. Um, the focus has changed from just interacting with people to interacting with people instead of just interacting with content when content was just mailed to students. Um, one thing that the author cautions us is to not concentrate on the technology too much, but we need to use technology just to enhance collaboration and interaction um, and meaningful, meaningful learning. Um, and learning communities encourage collaborative thinking and learning experiences. So now it's your turn to talk. Um, what I'd like for you to raise your hand um, and let me know what is one interesting piece of information you've learned in today's class. So when you're ready, raise your hand and I will uh, call your name and then click on the microphone and then you can talk. And remember to turn your microphone off and put your hand down when you're finished. Uh, the microphone is in the bottom middle of the screen and it looks like a microphone. Go ahead, Annika. I think one of the most interesting things uh, from, from what you've gone over and what we read in Chapter 4 is the fact that um, they didn't see a lot of difference between uh, the online and face-to-face -face classes. It's something that I've argued, but um, it's always it's always nice to read the research that that is in fact the case when done well. <laughs> right, and yeah, I agree. I th like you had said earlier, I think it depends on the instructor, and it also depends on the learner. I know for me, I actually prefer face-to-face -face classes sometimes. Uh, Candice. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, great. Um, so I, I agree with uh, what Annika said, and it's it's good to know that some of those um, you know battles against online learning are, are kind of being um, pushed up against because it's important to have different ways that students can absorb that learning. Um, in in our regional campus, we do have um, long distance learning classrooms, so we have students who can have instructors at our Dayton campus and stream their activities, their lectures right up um, to a classroom at our location. So it does offer a broader scope of the education that our students can receive. Um, and I've personally really enjoyed this online learning experience. I wasn't sure how well I would adapt to it, but I think it's been really beneficial for, for the way I learn. I agree. I, I'm preferred, always preferred face-to-face, -face, but I have enjoyed uh, these completely online learning program. I really didn't think I would, but I, I really do. Katie? So it, something that um, you guys may be figuring out as I continue to talk to you guys, but something that always amazes me is how the things that tend to strike me um, as the most significant learning pieces are when things are rephrased for me in in a way where it's like, I already knew something, but you just made it so point blank obvious that it's <laughs> it's the thing that sticks out in my head. Um, and that was that you, so I 
was very, very hesitant to ever try online classes. I did not feel comfortable with that. That's not how I meet people. That's not, I am very introverted as it is, and so I have a very hard time breaking that ice. And it's easier for me to do that in person. But something you mentioned was, but I, at the same time, I don't want to be around people who are all like me either. Um, it's an interesting juxtaposition. And something you mentioned is that, in a way, um, you really, you do have a lot of opportunities to get people who are very different in online classes, but you pointed out you guys already have something in common when you're a bunch of people in an online class. You are in that class, and that will break the ice for you, and while that's the most obvious thing in the entire world, mm -hmm. it just, it it's something that just didn't ever occur to me as point blank obvious as it is, um, and so I appreciate that you said that, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I say that's the, the one thing I, I miss um, doing completely online classes is the interaction with people, just, you know, seeing them face to face and having that one to one interaction. But besides that, I really like them. So we're going to have a quiz over the, this chapter. Um, you'll log into Pilot, go to the assessment tab, and it's named Chapter 4 is the name of the quiz and it's due tomorrow by February 2nd by midnight. Uh, so reminders, our next class is next Friday, February 8th. And don't forget to complete your quiz before tomorrow night at midnight. Um, if there's, does anybody have any questions? If not, have a great evening and we'll see you next week.